Hi guys, it's Danny here from Danstech. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at a case from Anadies. This is an AI uh, crystal cube case. Now, I have worked with Anadies in the past. Uh, I did actually review one of their full-size ATX glass cases. Overall, pretty good. And for the price, you'd get a lot there for the price. Um, yeah, I'm just going to say that. So I'm hoping uh, you kind of get the same from, this, same from this case. A lot of value, a lot of features um, that you really don't get. Uh, I suppose from the... The brands that are um, more known, I I suppose I could say that. Um, but regardless, not not going to knock the Anadies brand at all. The previous case was very good, and, I, and I'm hoping that this case, also uh, this cube case, is going to be very very good. So without further ado, uh, let's jump into it. To get it started, ask for an exterior look at the case. The case comes in at 40 centimeters in both height and depth, with the width being 31 centimeters. The weight of the case is 9 kilos, empty, which is the weight of many fully assembled gaming rigs today, so not exactly light. Now the main selling point of this case is the fact it features very solid glass side panels and also a front glass piece. These are made of 5mm tinted tempered glass and comes with 5 solid RGB LED fans. On to an overview, the front features 4 LED 120mm fans, as mentioned, that sit behind the front glass panel, of which are all pre-connected to the fan controller inside the case, where you can change the colours and effects and the speed of the fans from a standard to a fast RPM, not affecting the glow. You can change these settings also with the buttons on the bottom of the case in the add-in slot installed at the rear of the case, featuring all of the same buttons. Very nice to see. The fans go many different colours, with white also being an option here. The front fans are mounted to a metal plate, so you would need to remove this if you want to see it install two 140mm fans and move the LED fans to the top of the case. The fans feature many different colours, including red, blue, green, including when on limited to also white and pink. You also get two long magnetic dust filters that come with the case, which aren't attached, but you can attach to the front of the case from the inside to stop dust buildup. Now one note is that all the included fans are connected to the controller with their own special connector, so no connecting these to the main board or so your own fan controller. I suppose there are both advantages and disadvantages to do it this way around, however, this is the connectors on the fans. The left side features the I.O. featuring two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, standard HDOG connections and a reset button which flashes to show the hard drive or SSD activity. And finally, a three-speed fan controller to the bottom. This additional fan controller is very different for the one that's included for the RGB LED fans, and this is located in the back chamber of the case next to the power supply and supports only three-pin fans and are controlled with two 5 or 0 volts output. Also, it does look like it's possible to change the front I.O. to the right side of the case by removing the two plastic pieces from the front and just rewiring the cables. The power button is at the top right, which features a white LED, just like the reset button, and further up we find another removable magnetic mesh filter, providing dust filtering for any fans you choose to mount up here. Maximum support is two 140mm fans or 420mm fans. As for radiator support, Anadies say the case supports 240 and 280 mm radiators in the top and the front, although I don't have any radiators here at the moment to test fit, unfortunately. Now for the sides, the case features beautiful smoke glass panels which screw on with four dark metal thumb screws each. Other these thumb screws are rubber pieces to prevent damage to the glass. Now moving on inside the case, the first thing you'll notice is that there are no hard drive cage in the main chamber at the front. This case has two sections like many of the Corsair air cases, so these mount on the other side where the power supply would also sit. Two standard mechanical hard disks are to be installed in the cage on the included plastic brackets which slide into the caddy which swings out on a pretty cool hinge, with the other one to be installed in the other case chamber next to the front bottom left 120mm fan. As for SSDs, one would attach to the outside of the cage around in the back compartment with others attaching to the cage with smaller screws or on the motherboard tray which to be honest is not very ideal if you plan to install lots of drives and are going to have lots of cables. 
Now for the left chamber, the case supports up to extended ATX motherboards with six free PCI expansion slots total with a custom hold down bracket for these so they're not recessed on the back like on some cases. The case features many rubber grommets for hiding all sorts of power and data cables. And talking about power cables, the RGB fan controller has all the fans attached to it already. However, you would need a SATA power cable to power the controller. If not mentioned, the rear also features an additional 120mm RGB LED fan to match the other four included in the front. The case also does feature a cutout for installing aftermarket CPU colours, however I found it's rather small and is initially blocked by that hinged hard drive cage, so you would need to remove it to get started, quite a pain, so I would simply recommend installing the CPU colour to your board before placing the board into the case. Now for a look at the bottom of the case, it features room for an additional fan with plenty of room for it to breathe due to the height of the case and a slide out dust filter to continue the trend keeping the dust out of the case. Now around back there is quite a bit of room for cable management for power and data cables for components including many metal hooks acting as tie down points and places to tie cables together. Mentioning tying things down, included in the accessory box is more than a few black cable ties in addition to mostly labelled bags of screws, good to see, and some additional standoffs. Oh, and a pretty lame user manual as mentioned, I believe. Oh, and two metal brackets. I've still not figured out what these are for. Like I said before, for my review of the NAD's AI7 case, I would really like to see NAD's really improve their user manuals. It really lets their cases down. So talking about specific components, as for clearances for many main components, you've got 168mm for CPU colour, 310mm for graphic card unless you do move the front fans, which is not ideal, however it would give you a bit more room for a GPU, or shall I say GPUs. And as for moving a modern i5 dual GPU test system with wonderfully overpriced DDR4 memory into this case, it was a breeze. The case's internal layout is great and building sure is pretty easy. No complaints for myself. The inclusion of the pre-connected integrated RGB fan controller means no connection of the fans and the fact the case comes with five 120mm fans is fantastic, no pun intended. Support for even more cooling and radiators is great. And all fan filters are easily removable, which is just fantastic to see. These features all make this mostly steel and glass case quite hard not to recommend, considering that you do get a secondary fan controller, which may be Merlex powered, and the fact the manual is quite honestly uh, quite annoying to look at. It is a good case, and I would recommend it. Anyhow, let's roll the outro. So there we are, that was the Anadis uh, AI Crystal Cube overall. Very good case, would recommend it. Um, yeah, hopefully my film work and things was okay. I have kind of um, just come back to creating content here on YouTube after a two hour, uh, not a two hour break, a two year break. Uh, so hopefully, you know, um, the audio is okay. The lighting's been good and the camera work is all, also has been pretty good. If not, do let me know. Um, yeah, that's kind of that. Any, any comments about the video or the product, please put them in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, without further ado, thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.